Welcome back. So we've been talking about parameter estimation, essentially a statistical method of fitting the parameters of a probability distribution from data. And I want to introduce today this notion of the consistency of that parameter estimate theta hat. Um, so maybe I'll just write down uh, kind of what we're talking about. So we have some probability distribution uh, of you know x given these parameters, maybe this is a Poisson distribution or a normal distribution, and given some data, some measurement data x, I want to estimate, I want to find the best estimate of the parameters of that distribution theta hat. So in the case of Poisson, I'd be trying to estimate the lambda parameter. In the case of a normal distribution, I'd be estimating the mean and the variance, mu and sigma squared. And this idea of consistency is super important. It essentially tells us whether or not this estimate is unbiased or biased if it converges to the true parameter values or not in the large n limit, in the limit of large data sample. Okay, so I'm going to define what I mean by consistency. And then we're going to state a fact that the parameter estimate theta hat obtained through the method of moments is in fact a consistent uh, estimate of the parameters. Okay, so uh, consistency. So we're going to say if uh, theta hat is an estimate of theta, is an estimate of a true theta of theta, and uh, this is based on a sample size of n, based on a sample size of n, okay, then theta n is consistent. I'm going to put this little n here. If theta n hat, so just explicitly saying that this is based on a sample of sized n, then uh, theta n hat is consistent if, uh, if it converges, oof, converges, converges, if it converges uh, to the true value of theta, to theta, and we say converges in probability, so we've seen this before, um, when we looked at the law of large numbers, there's this, this very like mathematical probabilistic definition of converges. It means that um, the distribution converges um, in probability. I'll write this out as math in a minute. Then theta is consistent if it converges to the true value in probability uh, as n goes to infinity. And specifically what we mean by converges in probability is a very mathematical notion. It says that Remember, theta hat is a, is a random variable because it is a function of a bunch of samples which themselves are random variables. Each of these x's are random variables. My, my data I collect as a statistician, I think those are random variables drawn from this distribution. Then this estimate itself is a random variable with a mean and a standard deviation and all of, you know, a, a distribution. So for this estimate to converge to the true value means that the density function, the probability of this being close to this has to converge. So the way we write this mathematically is the probability of the absolute value of the difference between our estimate and the true value being greater than, uh, than epsilon. So the probability of my estimate being more than epsilon away from the true value goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And you could actually formulate this in terms of like a delta and an epsilon using like calculus if you wanted, but this is mathematically how to write this. So consistency means that as n goes to infinity, the probability that our estimate is more than epsilon away from our true value goes to zero for all positive epsilon. This means that essentially this distribution has to converge to the true value theta. Okay, it means that the mean of this random variable, the average value has to be the true value, and its variance has to go to zero as n goes to infinity for this probability to go to zero. That's what it means intuitively, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to state this uh, fact 
about the method of moments, um, which I think is pretty useful, is that the method of moments, method of moments, estimates, we're going to call those theta hat, those are consistent. Okay, this is a fact, um, fact. I am not going to prove this, um, this fact. It, you know, this is actually a pretty good exercise for you to make sure you understand the method of moments, but I'm gonna walk you through approximately how it works, okay? So the idea here is what you can show, before you show that these estimates are consistent, these estimates theta hat are a function of my estimated moments. These are my uh, estimated moments. Remember the first moment is the expected value, the second moment is the expected value of x squared, and so on and so forth, um, these, these higher and higher moments. What you can show first, what you need to prove first, kind of a, a lemma, if you will, a lemma, is that the estimated moments are consistent, the estimated moments, these mu k hat are consistent, meaning that they converge to the true moments in probability as n goes to infinity. Uh, they converge to the true moments we say in probability, meaning it's this expression, in probability. They converge to the true moments in probability as n goes to infinity. Now, you've already seen an example of this. Remember the law of large numbers? The law of large numbers, the law of large numbers, essentially, is a proof, it, it, it is a statement of this lemma for k equals one, okay? This is a special case, a special case for k equals one, essentially showing that mu hat one, the expected value, the, the mean, this, this is the sample mean, um, remember of your data, this is the sample mean of your data, one over n, sum i equals one to n of each of my random variables, that estimated uh, first moment or estimated expectation value um, converges to the true mean of your data as n goes to infinity. We've already stated this and proven the law of large numbers. Uh, remember, we use, um, I believe, you know, Markov and Chebyshev's inequalities to prove this, okay? So what I would like you to do, if you really want to understand this, first off, you don't need to prove this. You can take my word for it. This is a fact that the method of moments estimates theta hat are consistent, meaning they converge in probability to the true value, meaning that random variable, its variance goes to zero as n goes to infinity, and its mean value, its expected value, is the true parameter value we're trying to estimate. If you take my word for it, you don't have to prove this. But if you want to kind of make sure that you understand all of these concepts, the method of moments and the law of large numbers, um, you know, kind of in general, you can actually prove this by first showing that the moments, the estimated moments, uh, mu k hat, are consistent, meaning that they converge in probability to the true moments. And the first k equals one case is the law of large numbers. So you can go back to that lecture, you can watch how we prove that using Markov and Chebyshev inequalities, and then you can use that to prove this for k equals two and three and four, and for all k. And if all of these mu's are consistent, then you can also show that our estimated parameters theta hat are in fact consistent. That would be a really nice exercise for you, and if you can do that, then you'll have a really good mastery over all of this material. Okay, um, last point, I just wanna make a couple of like little notes here so that I don't forget. Consistency essentially means that theta hat uh, is an unbiased estimate or estimator of the true theta. That's essentially what this implies is that theta hat is an unbiased estimate. Um, and that essentially also means that the expected value of theta hat equals theta true, the true value of theta, 
Okay, um, so that's what consistency means. You can prove it for the method of moments. This is the thumbnail sketch. It's also true for the maximum likelihood estimate, which we'll be talking about soon. The maximum likelihood estimate is also a consistent unbiased estimate of the true parameter values. So really useful, um, and it's related to this law of large numbers and things we've looked at before. Okay, thank you.